Last weekend, I participated in the Ludum Dari 49 Game Jam. In case you didn't know what a game jam is, it's an event in which you make a game in a certain time frame, in this case, 48 hours. I joined with my custom engine written in C++ and OpenGL. The engine had only been in development for about a month or so, and it was pretty unstable. Exactly like the jam's theme, which was revealed to be unstable at the start of the jam. My idea was to create a game where the player must stay afloat by removing unstably sprouting boosters to survive. The idea was simple enough, but I needed some good controls to go along with it. I decided on rotating with the A and D keys, entering slow motion with the right mouse key, boosting upwards with the left mouse key, and removing boosters with the E key. I started off by creating a sprite for the player. I made him a basketball because I feel like that made him less boring than being a solid circle. I wanted this game to be simplistic, but fun enough that people will play it. I went for a mobile game-esque art style. After I finished with the sprite, it was time to add the player to the game. To do this, I opened up my sample project, which contained a simple tile map platformer controller, which I quickly modified so I had the player falling into the void. He's a lot bigger than I thought he would be. There, that's better. Then I got to work making the player controls. The player was now able to rotate with the A and D keys and boost upwards with the left mouse key. We had the basic player movement. Next I added a hitbox to the player. As we needed a way to position the boosters onto the player, I took in a rotation and used some math to draw some points around the player. Next I was ready to start creating the actual boosters. Now before we do that, I need to add some juice to the game because right now it's very boring and unsatisfying. I did this by creating a particle system. A particle system is a system where tiny objects called particles which are simple and fast to process can be combined to make effects such as these. They're a great way to add polish and juice to a game and I'm going to make one. Now you may all think that a particle system is really hard to make and I can't possibly make it in two hours. It's actually quite simple. I did it by creating a component for the particle system. Inside this component, I contained a vector of particles, which were individual structs containing information such as color, position, velocity, and other interesting things. Update was called on each particle, and particles were created each time the emit timer ran out. This is a clip of me creating the particle system, except it's 6999.48 percentages fast. After that frenzy, I made sprites for the boosters. Great, it works. I made some tweaks to the particles and it looks a lot better now. However, the player could still escape off the screen. I added some simple hacky physics code to prevent this. It's finally starting to shape up. Now it was time to add in the unstable mechanic and have the player unstably sprout boosters. Unfortunately, I ran into a few bugs in which adding a game object would make the whole scene overwritten. So I spent some time fixing and debugging the system.
There we go. Right now the game is sort of impossible, as after you get to a certain amount of boosters, the forces start fighting each other and you'll inevitably fall, so I started implementing a way to remove the boosters. When I drew an icon over the booster to indicate when you could remove it, however, it appeared below the booster which meant I needed some sort of sprite sorting system. I did this by using a lambda sort that compares the draw layers and it works now. Uh oh. Now that I had basically completed the game, I needed to create a tutorial to teach and introduce the basic concept of the game. It seems to be working well, let's take a look under the hood. It was quite easy, although the way I implemented it was lazy and dumb. It was basically a bunch of nested if loops that make the computation more expensive the further you get into the tutorial. Since I thought I needed some sort of audio, I just made a quick exhaust sound. It wasn't much, but I didn't have time. However, I soon realized my game was broken. Nobody could play it unless they had Visual Studio installed. It was missing two DLL files that shouldn't even be needed. So I did what any respectable game developer would do. Copy the files in even though you don't know why they are needed. We've reached the end of this video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And now behold the final game. Now provided, the game is really easy to cheat since I read the data into a text file that you can literally just modify however you like. It doesn't really matter for now but soon the engine will have a proper save system. Goodbye.